What's the first thing that comes to your mind when you hear Bihar? Litti Chokha, UPSC, or maybe Gang Safar Sepur. I promise you, after end of this talk, whenever you would hear Bihar next, you'll remember me, Adarsh Kumar. Namaste. I'm Adarsh from Champaran, Bihar. I was born and raised there. My mother did not go to good school. She was married before even, even could she complete her grade 10. So she had this big, big dream of giving me a good education. So she got me admitted into private school. But the big change came during Dhanteras Puja, when my mother, using a life saving, bought me a laptop. In case you don't know Dhanteras Puja, it happens before Diwali every year. At the same time, India was going through the digital transformation. I still thank Mr. Ambani for making internet so affordable. People like me were able to access internet. But at first, my searches were as random as how to order an iPhone for free to how to hack Subway Surfer. But then I stumbled upon something which completely changed my life. Entrepreneurship. Something which intrigued me. And growing up, I had seen struggle very close. Poverty, inequality, lack of resources, everything possibly imagine. you can imagine. So with that, I will share my first learning of life. You should find your purpose. Purpose to you might sound very intimidating. But believe me, you don't need to find it on your day one. No one finds it on day one, at least I did not. But as you do, do things, look out for that one thing which makes you happy, which is meaningful to you and the world around you. It can be as simple as being an artist or being the best football player in the world. In my case, at first I thought, I is ban jata hu. Ab aakhir bhiyar se hu, to UPC se sabka sapna hota, right? Then I thought politician ban jata hu. But all these things required me to be of certain age, hold certain degree, come from certain background. But there was this one thing which did not require me to be of, come from certain background, have a degree, or be of certain age. Entrepreneurship. It just required me to have a pure passion to do things beyond me, above me, and have a passion to change this world. With this attitude and the laptop I had, I, along with my, one of my friends in grade 8, I started my first startup. You know, we were just two kids sitting in Bihar knowing absolutely nothing. We learned how to code online, we learned how to do marketing online even how to create a logo. I still remember reaching out to 100 IITNs, not on LinkedIn, but Facebook, to help us with tech and design. Only one of them replied and helped us for free. So with this also, you know, like within three months we failed. But I don't regret that failure today, because that failure taught me so much. And with that, I'll share my second learning of life. Start with what you have. Please do not wait for the perfect time. It's never going to come. Perfect time is a myth. If I thought that the perfect time will come, and then I'll start it, then I won't give this TEDx talk. So start with what you have. Now at the end of 2020, I had co-founded Mission Badlao. We worked with 1,300 families in my village, helped them get government schemes like Ayushman Bharat, did plantation drives, and did so many other activities related to education, health, and women empowerment. For the first in my life, I was feeling like making a real difference. But you know, then came the big Indian small town dream. Three magical words. Not what you may be thinking, but rather Indian Institute of Technology, IIT. I thought, jay crack kar liya, life set ho jayegi, sab kuch mil jayega. Paisa, network, respect, knowledge, everything I needed to be a good entrepreneur. So at 14, with nothing but determination and a couple of notes in my pocket, I left for Kota. Kota is a city of dreams, city of drama, and sometimes heartbreak. Within days, I realized I won't be able to afford the coaching fees or also I don't fit into this place. My days and nights became sleepless. I wasn't able to sleep. I started thinking about failure. What will I say to my home? What will I tell my mother? What will I tell my family? What will I tell my village? So I was full of negative thoughts, full of emotion, and I was clueless. The truth is, Adarsh's story inspires me, but it makes me curious. What happens inside the brains of individuals who perform efficiently? What's the science behind Gritton stress? Now here's a graph which shows events in others' life against predicted stress. We as observers think that others' story, others' circumstance would most definitely make him stressed. Yet, others, when you went through all of these events, when you went through your life, did you feel stressed? Of course I felt stressed. But you know, when I started taking action, that stress started working positively for me. Working positively for you. The truth is, Adarsh's perspective makes my prediction deviate. Because perception changes the way our body reacts to stress. I wanted to hold on to that. 
Being the founder of India's first student-led cortisol detection startup, I've been on a journey to unravel what cortisol does to our body. Cortisol is a stress hormone, and we produce it when we feel stressed. However, it follows a lot of health hazards. Heart attacks, inflammation, acne, anxiety, the pit in your stomach that you feel when you're about to give a TED talk. That's right. But the truth is, that's not what all cortisol does, right? So I want all of you to do this exercise with me to actually feel what cortisol does with us. All right. Everyone, please get up. Wherever you're sitting, please stand up. All right. Now, raise both of your hands as high as you can. Think about one moment, one person, who has truly made you feel stressed in your life. It could be a teacher, an uncle, or aunt. Now, for the rest of the talk, keep standing. I'm joking, don't worry. Now, you have to do this activity with me. Take the alphabet and sing it, but in reverse, on the count of three. One, two, three. Z, Y, X, W, V, U, S, T. Oh, wait, we messed up. Again, Z, Y, X, W, V, U, S, T. Blank. You can sit down now, because I've proved my point. The truth is, this activity made me produce cortisol. It made me feel stressed. But I have to apologize. Because I have led misleadingly. Cortisol is not a bad hormone. Individuals who perform efficiently use stress, use cortisol to motivate themselves. It allows them to perform efficiently. At peak performance, we see arousal or cortisol levels at the highest. Yet, on the other side of the spectrum, 50% of depression cases show cortisol as a leading factor. What is the trade-off? And how can we as individuals use cortisol to perform efficiently? So I did one exercise, right? Before that, let me tell you about the diurnal rhythm. So when you wake up in the morning, your cortisol is supposed to spike. That's the natural rhythm of cortisol. And it's supposed to go down throughout the day, like you can see in this graph. But hypercortisolism, which is seen when you produce a lot of cortisol, keeps your cortisol high throughout the day. Now, I'm a believer in science and primary research. So on two consecutive days, what I did was, on one day, I did tasks that really stressed me out. However, I did them with no order, no routine, no calendar. And this is how my cortisol levels, or stress predicted levels, look like. They went up, they came down a bit, but they stayed pretty high. However, on the second day, I planned my day. I anticipated and predicted what activities make me feel stressed. I prepared myself and used cortisol to my advantage by predicting what activities make me feel stressed. I want you to think about this for a moment. If we as individuals can perceive something as cortisol as good, if we can use the molecule of cortisol that's making so many individuals feel stressed and allow us and allow it to allow us to perform efficiently, then what else can the human mind do, right? Think about the Boston bombing. Individuals who feel stressed, who felt stressed during the bombing because they faced it, of course felt stressed, but not as much as the individuals who were watching the news coverage because they thought that that circumstance produces cortisol. Dr. Arya comes research from Stanford University. Two sets of employees. One are told that stress is enhancing, the other that stress is deteriorating. The ones who believe that stress is enhancing show positive effects, while the other don't. That is the real reality behind cortisol, that we can use it to our advantage. Now, before I tell you about the neurochemistry of grit, I'd like to pass the mic back to others who'd like to share another segment of his story. Now, when I look back to my days in Kota and try to understand what was that one thing which helped me hold my ground, was this never give up attitude, which I learned back in Bihar. Also a change in my mindset from thinking about what could go wrong to thinking about what could go right. Now, you know, I'm, I say, to be an entrepreneur, you need to be very Besharam. So using my Besharami attitude and the laptop I had, I started reaching out to people asking for help. And the big change came during an opportunity which I got to pitch my idea in Chandigarh. So, you know, a Bihar boy going to Chandigarh for the first time, you know, they were IB school kids and everything, and I'm coming from Bihar. I don't know how to speak English, I don't know how to talk, and I had to pitch my idea in English. When I went to the stage, I don't know what happened to me. I decided to speak what I knew, what I wanted to do in my own language, not thinking about what the world would think, rather just being 
true to, the, to myself and the people around me. That's one of the jury members loved. And he offered us funding and most importantly mentorship. That's how I met my mentor and angel of life, Mr. Rahul Narvekar. With his help, I started working at startups, attending events from local time eaters to global investor summits in UP or happening any part of the country. I traveled to almost 20 cities, attended many events, and worked at so many startups and learned how to build something from scratch. And that's what led me to start Skillzo, a platform helping school students become 21st century leaders and innovators. By the time I'm giving this TED Talk, TED Talk we have upskilled more than 19,500 students. So for the first time, my mother did not have to worry about her finances. She was happy, she was proud of me. But there was something inside me which I felt missing. And that's what led me to write an email to IU Sir. Sir responded within minutes. Within hours, within a call. Within two days, it was confirmed that I would be attending Jayashri Periwal International School on 100% scholarship. In case you don't know, in case if you're watching this online, IU Sir is the CEO of Jayashri Periwal Group of Schools. Today, it's been almost eight months since I've joined this school, and I can proudly say I love this place. And that's what makes me wear this t-shirt today and having this logo on my heart. So life here is good. Today, people at JPS fondly call me the Skillzo guy or the Bihar boy. And of course, I love it. But you know what's the crazy part? In 2022, when I went to Kota to take admission into ITJ Institute, I could not. But within two years, IIT Guwahati invited me to judge an autism competition, not once, but twice. The last one being as recent as two weeks ago. <laughs> so, so how did this all happen? From Bihar to Kota, Kota to Skillzo, Skillzo to IIT, IIT to now at JPIS. I will give only one word, grit. Grit either makes it or breaks it. And as Angela Duckworth in her book defines grit as passion and perseverance. So just have it. Be gritty and the world will be yours. And if you ever think change is not possible, just take a pause, just think again, and think of this Bihar boy. Thank you. The truth is that really does deserve applause. Adarsh epitomizes what it means to be grateful. Now, the important question. How can we as individuals be grateful? That is the human brain completely mapped. All of our 100 billion neurons that make us us are present there. And there's one structure, one fascinating structure that's associated with grit, the anterior mid cingulate cortex. Now, this structure of our brain is stimulated when we do things that we hate. Yes, you heard me correctly. When we stimulate the AMCC by doing things that we hate, it increases in size. And when it does, we become more resilient, more tenacious. Let me give you an example. That is my Caesar cipher language. Most of you must have seen it on my socials when I posted it during my exams. What does it mean? Each symbol on this language is an alphabet. Each alphabet that is ciphered, the, the number of times, that is the day. So if it's 18, it's been ciphered 18 times. This is hard. But the truth is, I did it anyway. Because to me, this was an activity that stimulated my AMCC. It made me more resilient. It made me more tenacious. And it can allow you to be more resilient, to be more grateful. Because that is what we must have in life. Why? Because life is unpredictable. With respect to our theme today, which is Kaizen, we must understand that with continuous improvement, continuous movement comes continuous friction. The moment we take one step forward, the ground beneath our feet starts to stretch, and the distance between us and our goals starts to expand. And that is why we must understand the science of grit. We must have our own Caesar ciphers. We must have our own activities that we hate, but we do them anyway because they make us resilient. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. And before I conclude, can we have a please round of applause for Adarsh Kumar, my co-speaker, without whom this wouldn't have been possible. Thank you.